Janan, um, we will proceed with uh, Dr. Sonar's presentation first, and then uh, Devdatta will be the moderator for the rest of the program, and he will be introducing other speakers. So I will uh, invite Dr. Sonar, but before that, this is an initiative we would like to collaborate, network, as well as mentor uh, people who are like-minded, who are working on AI in health, and we would like to take that initiative uh, forward. At the end of this presentation, all, all the presentations will have Q&A, and at that point, we will uh, like to have your views on how do you how do you want to proceed with this presentation so we can formulate some ideas. So over to you, Dr. Sonar. Very much obliged and very privileged to have you here with us, sir. Thank you. So very Dr. good morning Dajin to Rasona. all. So very good morning to all. Thanks for giving me this honor. In fact, I told uh, Gajanan ji ki don't make me chief guest. You just make me as a part of your you know, all members and this one. So thanks for giving me this privilege and thanks to all. So I'll just not take uh, much of, I have not made a presentation as such, but I just tell you what I've, I'm coming from. So, uh, you know, I did my PhD in 96 to 2000. So I have been working on AI almost more than 25 years now. Uh, and I started with classical AI and uh, Dr. Anita Khan, uh, she she knows that we did the first AI course in 1992. You know, a lot of people might not have heard about, uh, you know, that AI started somewhere. Of course, it started much earlier, you know, or in late or early 50s, you can say, with the Alan Turing's, you know, with Turing test and this one. So uh, that time, you know, the focus was more on, uh, you know, if I call this as a classical AI, you know, classical AI, the focus was more on cloning the human expertise, you know, converting whatever knowledge we have. Suppose you are a doctor who work on for 25 years. Now you want to clone your knowledge to say 70, 80%. So can I just sit with you and try to understand how you, you know, diagnose the patient, how you reason, uh, you know, uh, your outcome and this one. And to certain extent, we have done it. Uh, one of the diabetologists in Mumbai, uh, Suresh Purohit, uh, he has more than 25 years of experience in Kolaba. So what we did, we tried to uh, like find out when he prescribes a medicine X, what he exactly looks at. So we work backwards. So we, we took some 25, uh, I think 15, 20 odd medicines and we looked at back to prescribe that medicine, what doctor looks at, what is the age of the patient, what are the current medication, what is the pathology report shows and everything. And we try to, uh, you know, put that in a rule based form, you know, uh, this one. So basically what we tried that time, it just, uh, you know, clone the human intelligence but of, of course all of you know like the neural network came in uh, sorry came in 90s or even some part of it in 80s and after 2010 uh, the, I, uh, the technology is completely democratized you know you can now access ai through apis and this one but only my uh, like uh, how i guide, uh, got an idea of doing a phd in uh, my phd was in hybrid intelligence system so that time i tried to connect expert system, neural network, genetic algorithm, and expert system together. So you can solve the problem more holistically rather than just using only one part of ML or something like that. And Professor Larry Metzger, uh, you know, he was a professor in uh, Washington University. I attended his uh, one of the tutorial on intelligence system at, uh, you know, international conference. And that's what I got motivated. And he uh, luckily, he was my one of the examiners for PhD, you know, uh, as well. So I have written some articles in Computer Society of India also, also uh, Indian magazine. So uh, my focus is on like, uh, I, I, I believe that supplementing machine learning with human intelligence is going to help a lot. You know, For example, instead of going for unsupervised learning, it's always go for supervised learning because unsupervised learning means you are wasting a lot of uh, your resources. I mean, for example, Google machines took a hell lot of computing time to just find out what is called as a cat. But for us, you just take a two years kid, that kid will tell you what is dog and what is, you know, tiger and what is why. That means uh, we have to have human intelligence supplemented into business. So what we call as a hybrid intelligence, you know, combination of because machines, uh, uh, you know, machines don't have natural intelligence. Sorry to say, but machines cannot even achieve four years old person's intelligence, you know, uh, and there are a lot of examples. In fact, uh, a uh, very simple example I give, you know, if you give the primate photo to a face recognition system, it will still try to find out whether that face looks like with some person or not. But if you give the same photo to a kid, the kid will say, you know, uncle, this is not a photo of somebody else's photo, you know. 
so this is what and captcha is good example of that you know like machines cannot chill figure out or even if you have simple captcha for example uh, you know uh, say there are four letters located at four corners of uh, you know an above uh, left side image starting from right top corner machines will 100% fail you know if you have a little bit complex kind of thing one so what do you need you need a lot of contextual knowledge there is an interesting article on limitations of deep learning if you are interested is in keros uh, this one uh, they talk interesting thing like uh, machines just do the pattern you know pattern matching this is a input this is output but why that input why that output they never understand you know so uh, what i'm saying ki like and there are a lot of domains like if you take for example customer analytics or business domain like bfsi uh, i'm not talking about like image recognition or this one i'm talking about more where you need conceptual knowledge about the products you need concept, uh, knowledge about the customers you must have a semantics about it otherwise it just mess it up it messes you know uh, messes up so i gave you last time example suppose 1947 is not a number for indians it has some meaning similarly uh, you know when assistant professor professor and associate professor this is a difference you cannot just recommend an assistant professor job to a person who is already a professor you know because machines they have to be told look there is a difference between associate you know assistant and similarly like agm you know assistant general manager gen deputy general manager and general manager so unless and until you feed this information about various you know parameters in a contextual level it can be a taxonomy or it can be an ontology or something but it makes it more uh, you know meaningful and it can expedite your uh, what i call as a machine learning you know uh, this one okay and one of the technique i widely use i don't know whether some of you might have heard about it's called as a case based reasoning why i like this technology and i i worked extensively on this technology because it 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 actually puts context and machine learning together so you can actually guide a machine how it should be learning you know you can you can make a context behind every parameter so for example it can be a color context how two colors are similar how how two designations are similar how two sectors are similar so in the form of as again ontologies and taxonomies and similarity matrices so that you don't waste your time on deep learning i mean not in all domain but even if you have a little bit knowledge see we don't have a deep learning you know still we can do much effective decision making you know compared to machines of course the machines are enabled to uh, you know get insights from large data where not possible for us but uh, if you connect human intelligence with machine intelligence i think it can do much better you know uh, this one and again fully autonomous is still a long way to go uh you know if you bring in autonomous car opposite to iit campus you can imagine what's going to happen you know the car will not allow people to move because it will have so many sensors and there is so much of traffic so indian context i have my own doubts you know but the autonomous things will work you know uh, this one so uh, there is a long way to go you know but however there are a lot of domains i think you people are going to talk about it uh, ai has been you know successed quite a you know uh, 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 this one. okay and that's what i think i just wanted to tell you like just add semantics add human intelligence to your machine learning and ai it's going to give you a, you know a good results and so on okay so that's all i i think i have my time you know 5 minutes i just uh, you know uh, so we'll we'll uh, take on a q and a uh, whenever you have any question okay thank you once again very much yeah thanks very much thank you dr so